Look, it's Monday afternoon, and Armando Iannucci and Steve Coogan are now. Hey! Hey! hey. You've heard the show before. <laughs> you know what to do. We were discussing your name the other day, Armando. Thanks. And uh, we said that you you possibly could be a superhero. Why do I sound like a superhero? Well, because it's just like a... What is it? Is it Cuban? Italian? What is it's it? It's Italian. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you don't actually sound too no, Italian. Uh, I was born in Glasgow, and the name was given to me on birth. Uh, by uh, <laughs> it, it, by Italian parents uh, who happened to be there at the time of the birth. Um, nice so, gag. Thanks. Hey, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must say, I really did enjoy your uh, Radio 4 series that you did recently where you just went around and spoke to people. Oh, yeah, the In, in Excess. Yeah. yeah. The premise of the series was just looking at people who took life a bit too seriously and mm. a bit excessive about things, a bit uh, excessive about gadgets and yeah. about time management and stuff I don't like that. think that's a laughing matter. <laughs> and uh, it went down really well in some parts of Britain. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it was good. Yeah. And the ratings were stupendous. Uh, you're half right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Steve, how are you doing? I'm very, very well. Now... <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, it already? Isn't it? Isn't it hilarious? I know. It's going to be a bit of a problem. I've got my killer question then. Go on. Here's yeah. my killer question. Um, what's more exciting then, Steve, the laughter of an audience or the size of a sexual partner you're pleasing in bed? Um, well, well, usually um, I get sighs from the audience and uh, laughter and applause from the... <laughs> See, he's funny, he's funny, man. Yeah. What about, um, you, you've just recently become fairly well-known, I suppose, through doing the Jonathan Ross and through the Radio 4 series. Are, are you a changed man yet? Are you all big-time and nasty snapping I'm still, at people? I'm still the same as I always was, you know, mm. slightly big-headed. Mm. <laughs> now, you've done a, a lot of stuff for Spinning Image in the past. I suppose people will know you first from Spinning Image, won't they? Yeah. Really? Well, I, I sort of uh, made big inroads when sort of Thatcher fell and John Major got his job and... I was there already doing that <laughs> and uh, helped sort of promote the, uh, all the pee pushing and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, yes. And what uh, about the... <laughs> give us a little bit of Kinnock. I hate doing this. Like, no, no, give no. us a bit of Kinnock. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it's a pity, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm just quite sad that I don't have to do him that much anymore because he was, he was really enjoyable to do. You have to do an exaggerated version of them. People know this, you know, when you do the puppets, you've got to exaggerate the voice, make it slightly hyper real. So when I do Kinnock, the real Kinnock, I do him speaking like that in sort of soft tones, and <laughs> when he gets louder, he gets very loud like that and shouts very emphatic. Right. But on spitting image. <laughs> we have to do this very well, so like, uh, totally like that all the time. You know, all right, boy. Oh, that's, that's great, though. That gets you a round of applause here. Yeah. Uh, you've done a lot of stuff on Radio 4 just recently um, and, and that are now transferring to television. Oh, sorry. Uh, Alan Partridge. That's a big success. I'm under produced. I thought Alan was supposed to be here today, by the way. Um, he couldn't make it. Uh, he broke down. Yeah, his maroon okay. Ford Granada's off the road. Mm. Yeah. Who is Alan? Alan Partridge is the thinking woman's Nick Owen. <laughs> with, with, with a smattering of Alan Titchmarsh. A bit of Elton Wells being there. A, He's there. A, a, a spoonful of Elton Wells and a soup song of uh, Richard Magley. <laughs> he, might say. he often says that people say the pictures are so much better on radio. <laughs> but Alan says that, in fact, the reverse is true and the pictures are actually so much better on television, if you think about it. <laughs> Armando Iannucci and Steve Coogan are with us today. We'll come right back. Do stay with us. Are with us today. Take me. <laughs> Take me, I'm yours. <laughs> so, um, the character on Jonathan Ross's programme... Paul Calf. Yeah. Bag of rude mm. words was his catchphrase. How long did it take you to come up with, with a character like that? I mean, where do you get him from? Well, I, I went to um, Polytechnic. Not Oxford or Cambridge, uh, hey. in Manchester, <laughs> right? right? Okay. And when I when I was at uh, college there, there used to be lots of sort of there was a, a lot of townies, lot of, what I call them, people, sort of locals, don't really like the students. And uh, I was one of the students, of course. And mm. he's one of those people who you'd see walking down the road and have an aggressive look on his face, and you just cross the road, even though you know, as you're saying, <laughs> or you, in a nightclub, you'd never catch his eye because he knew there'd be trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? As soon as he looked at you, you'd look away or stare at your pint or something. Yeah. It's a perfect look as well, isn't it? That kind of the Long kind well, it's, of... it's 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 the, it's the streaks hair. It's sort of the it's fashion... 78, 1978. Well, isn't I'd it? say a little bit later. Would you? <laughs> I'd say 
circa 1988-81. Think about uh, Ultravox, uh, <laughs> perhaps, Duran Duran. Sleeves rolled up on the jacket, very right. important. White towelling socks, slip-ons. <laughs> Casual with a capital C, you might yeah. say. It's incredible. <laughs> Would you have to get tanked up to do him? Because it's an amazing voice. Well, well I'll tell you what, I, don't, I, I always have one drink before I go on. I always have a pint. And then I just start wobbling backstage and pretending to be drunk. Are you able to, I mean, I, you know, I hate it when interviewers say, well, come on, do a bit of him, do a bit of him. But are you able to leap into him and leap out of him? Yeah, I mean, it, it's not... <laughs> no. It's, 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 all, it's all so hard, right? It says, like, I, I am... Uh, I am a feminist. I, I am! You know, I think you got to be these days, you know. If you want to score with the birds. <laughs> you have at the moment this cassette out of uh, Alan Partridge. What one is it? Well, it's the Knowing Me, Knowing You sort of premiere cassette <laughs> issued by the BBC. And uh, on one side, there's an interview with um, a child genius um, <laughs> who irritates Alan. And it's quite a controversial programme because Alan, unfortunately, uh, strikes the child. Um, which isn't to be encouraged, but um, it was only a clip across the back of the head. Yes. Uh, on the it's not something a talk show host should be doing. Not really, no. I got all sorts no. of letters the following week from people who thought he had genuinely hit a nine-year-old child <laughs> on the radio and how this shouldn't be allowed. Funny. And on the other... Sorry. <laughs> Funny I thought we both thought, I thought we'd all died. <laughs> funny peculiar. It's more than uh, funny. funny ha -ha. Ha -ha. And on the other side, he's an interview with an old peer of the realm. Yeah. Who uh, dies of old age at the end of the programme. Oh, uh, yeah. You are. Which is tragic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so that's right. Yes, that thanks. is brilliant. Yeah, that is nice. awesome. Yeah. Let's take a few questions from the posse here. First of all, from Julie. Go for first? Steve Coogan and Armando Iannucci. I'd just like to ask, how is Alan's wife and has she risen from the dead recently? Ah, <laughs> now, an esoteric question if you're not behind the theology on this yes, one. Yes, yes. Uh, but keep when, uh, Alan was, <laughs> when Alan was doing his sports reports on On The Hour, there was a chatty, a chatty bit in yes, the programme in which the main <laughs> presenter turned to Alan and said, Alan, how are you? I gather your wife died this morning. <laughs> then the following week, the presenter picked up and said, uh, Alan, I gather your wife rose from the dead this morning. <laughs> and uh, Alan was a bit more elated. So I think the latest state of play is she is one of the living dead. On the Hour, of course, yes. is, is coming to television under a different name, yes? Yes, it's going to be called Bedeal and Newman Smell Like Reeves and Mortimer. <laughs> and, oh, uh, no, you've oh. made a mistake! <laughs> there is some project that will, yeah, we'll be doing something in the new year. We're back here with Steve Coogan and Armando Iannucci in just a moment. Stay right there, please. Well, Armando Iannucci and Steve Coogan. Yay! Come on, Steve. Give us some more of your impressions then, Steve. Come on. Here's Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> Good evening and... <laughs> <laughs> Good evidence. <laughs> Steve, do you ever, do you ever wake <laughs> up and forget who you actually are? Oh, oh good oh, question. Uh, I was going to ask uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Of course not. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Oh, I just, I just thought that you might, it might just. How could you forget who you are unless you had a, a, some mental disorder? Well, if you run through the number of voices you do at the rate thing. you do, then surely at some point it would trigger off some kind of. Mental... Amanda, just stick to kind of producing and don't Sorry. try and do my job. Because it obviously... was a sensible question. No, no, you have to ask questions that promote an emotional response. Okay then. Don't you know that? Okay, ask, <laughs> ask Steve an emotional response of question. Then. Okay. I'll back it up. has to be so. Let me just try and. Okay. I'll, I'll teach you something here. Like, right. you say, Steve, how come you're so damned ugly yet so successful? All right, and then, and then, and then <laughs> you see what happens? Then you get, then you get good radio. Excellent. Oh. Why is he pulling a gun out? Oh. <laughs> you see? It's getting an emotional I response. suppose I kind of did comedy because oh, I was ugly and people kind of like me if I cracked a gag. Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> so come on then, Steve, give us some more of your impressions. Uh, oh, oh blue me neck. Who's your favourite? Brian Glover. Brian yeah. Glover. Brian Glover. Brian Glover. I'll tell you why. Because I, I, I always think uh, Brian Glover, I think he's fantastic, right? Because he does um, all those, says those things like, Bread's better without checking out. <laughs> Get leash. Make tea bags. Make tea. Nah, that's awesome. That's... <laughs> 
Because the thing is, right, the thing is about Brian, that's his real voice. <laughs> I know. And it, it, it limits the kind of work he, do, he could do, you know. He's a good actor. He couldn't say, Vorsprung, Dirk, check me. <laughs> that won't work. Yeah. Now, you, you actually started out as an actor, really, didn't you? And, and, well, I went, to drama, into... I went to drama school and spent three years pretending to be a tree. Yeah. Um, that was and branched out. And then branched out. Oh, okay. yeah. That's the difference between you and me, Steve, that kind of humour. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I was doing it across the board kind yeah, of I know, you're appealing there. to more people, that's I important. I was trying to pull a few in there, because <laughs> you obviously weren't going to do it. <laughs> so, so listen, what's on the horizon for you, Steve? Uh, well, working with Armando. Yeah. On the come on, on the, come on, on the, on we're the, in the media. On the hour TV project and on the Alan Partridge thing, and I'm doing a little thing with Paul Carr for BBC Two as well. A little sort of one-hour video diaries um, <laughs> for Christmas, where Paul goes around with a camera, filming his friends and getting into fights. Don't you ever feel bad that here you are, look, taking the Mickey out of people that are sadly drunk? I mean. <laughs> Come on, you know, I mean, it's heartless, isn't it, Steve? Don't you feel that you're exploiting people with a drink problem? Hmm? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> We're going to come back with Steve Coogan and Amanda Iannucci in just a second. <laughs> and now we return with Amanda Iannucci and Steve Coogan. <laughs> Amando, how is it that you have managed to rise to these dizzy heights. It's you and Harry Thompson, really, controlling comedy in Great Britain. Are you going to... And therefore he must die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Be found washed up somewhere tomorrow morning in a puddle. With a big laugh on his face. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, a pair of Bermuda shorts. <laughs> naturally. Yeah. Um, how have you managed to rise to these heights? What did you do? What is the secret of your uh, success um, in nurturing comedy? It's Pretty sheer talent, really. Mm. Um, Where'd you get it from? It's uh, God-given. God <laughs> what can you do with him? Man. You just have to listen to him do as he's, do as you're told. <laughs> you know, that's the best way. Yeah. You've always done as you're told, oh, haven't you? Yes, sir. And look where it's got you. Yes, sir. Steve Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. OK, could you read that out for me, then? Oh, if you yeah. Thanks very much. Just from six o'clock there. Yeah, thanks. When you're ready. All right. From six o'clock, News <laughs> 93 with Sybil Roscoe and Rod McKenzie. 6.30 the evening <laughs> session with Joe Wiley and Steve Lamack. Mm, tonight you can hear highlights of Susie and the Banshees, Banshees, at this year's Reading Festival. <laughs> Carry on. 8.30, loud and proud. Live from Manchester with club DJ Paulette. This week, tackling the tabloids, a guide to the Manchester scene, and the shaman. The shaman. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, all tonight. Is there any more there for There's us? There's tons more, because this is a 24-hour station. <laughs> yes, I know that. Aired, <laughs> 9 o'clock, out of the blue, 6 with Mark Ratcliffe. <laughs> At 10 o'clock, Nikki Campbell. Tonight, Scylla Black, as you've never heard her before, on the subjects of sex, drugs, rock and roll, and Margaret Thatcher dot dot dot. Good grief. <laughs> 12 o'clock, Bob Harris. Uh, it includes tonight's uh, Black and Blues track. And, uh, records, records. <laughs> what am I talking about? That made history in Cornerstone. Smashing. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny if Bob Harris actually did sound like that? <laughs> 4 o'clock, Bruno Brooks with the Early Breakfast Show. Well, thank you very much. That, that, I'm sure that gets you a huge round of applause. Thank you. Good entertainment value. Sounding almost like a, a disc jockey enjoying himself there, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoying it. Every moment. What? We have Nikki here. Go ahead. Yep, 11 o'clock, BBC One, film 93 with Barry Norman. 10 o'clock, BBC Two, Newman and Bedill and Pieces, a new series there. 8 o'clock on ITV, Cocoon the Return. Okay. Thank oh, that's not a very good movie. Oh, actually. don't watch it then. Well, it's, it's quite good, no, you know. No, don't but watch it. We've seen it all before good. in the first movie. Yeah, very mm. true. Okay, what track you got, eight? Rich? You got track eight there, Oh, right? no, yeah, I have, yeah. Right, uh, the band are called Nothing. They're from St Albans. They're unsigned. You talk to me as if I'm two years old. <laughs> well, because you never usually have it queued up. <laughs> yes, mate. I do. If you say track A, I do track A. You don't, no, don't do you? Don't talk to me like I'm <laughs> no, you you know, don't, like no, a do child. You? Come on, let's what? face facts. You don't Sometimes actually... Sometimes I don't, but I'm busy here. I've right, got okay, and everything. Good, good. Oh, I've lost interest now. Who's the funky <laughs> bitch is the name of the track. You are. Oh. It's Mighty Jodie Foster, apparently. Yes. All right, well, let's listen then. Yeah, well, go on then. That's right, it. <laughs> That 
was really good there. I like that. Two minutes ten of Who's That Funky Bitch? Uh, it's Mighty Jodie Foster, apparently. This is a band called Nothing. Look at the mad staring eyes on them, look. Yeah. On I the mean, front I think cover, that's just the look they've affected, though. It's kind it's of effective. for children, that. <laughs> a little bit frightening for children. <laughs> uh, the band called Nothing from St Albans. It comes from an album which uh, includes tracks like Dr. Lecter Will Eat You Now. Uh-huh. <laughs> was That Love? Saturday Shenanigans, The Brothers Bell Heathers, and that track, like I said, was called Who's That Funky Bitch? Let's take a look at the gigs then, Some Rich. Gigs for this evening in Collude at the Hibernian in Birmingham, Fizzgog and People Eater, at JB's in Dudley, The Big and Cornerstone, at Oscars in Dundee, Baby Animals playing there this evening, at the Rock Garden, Covent Garden, Suspiria and Reb Reb something or other. <laughs> uh, the Dolly in Oxford Snag. Uh, the Melody Maker gig of the night, it says here, is at the Guildhall in Portsmouth. The Levellers, Chumbawamba and Credit to the Nation. And where I'm going to be tonight is at the Esplanade in Southend, Cry of Love and Head Swim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The very best to you and yours and yeah, your families. And thank you very thank you. so much for coming in. Armando Iannucci and Steve Coogan and the Posse. We're back tomorrow at three. It's it's great. Great. Respect. Respect. Respect.